Welcome back to Daily Stand-Up. Today we're going to be talking about propagator blocks and what they generally can be used for um, if you work in uh, C Sharp and .NET. So this is actually the same project that my whole two-stroke engine um, project I'm working on is, is, is contained in. Um, but I showed you on the last video a couple prototypes I made before I, I implemented the uh, Q and then um, Signal R. But I kind of want to continue uh, some of the prototype work that I showed you initially because I think it's a cool concept um, that is useful in some cases but not but shouldn't be overused is kind of how I, I look at this um, so I added this new endpoint just to test um, just pipeline and then I can pass in a, a, a number um, and so I'm just gonna be using postman here and then I'll just, I think it's running. So let me just call it and you can see that it gives me an output of eight and I pass in two. So I'll show you how I've got, I got there. Um, so the endpoint calls uh, the service I added called block service and then send data through block. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and go to that implementation there. So basically this, this service is, uh, it doesn't really do much. It just actually just calls my, um, instance of the propagator block that I'll show you in a second. So literally this is just like a pass through method. Also, we don't even need the service, but I just needed, I just, I kept the pattern right of the controller calls the service, but anyway, this is just testing. Uh, so let's go to, we're gonna go ahead and go into this uh, call uh, propagator block. Um, so if we go into the implementation here, you can see that I have some stuff commented out. I'll show you why in a second. And then you can see some code down below. So I'm gonna walk through this and actually hopefully explain some of what's happening. But for some context around this code, it, it really comes from a functional uh, way of programming. Um, in particular, um, it, this, this way of programming using blocks allows you to compose methods together. So you don't explicitly have to uh, define a variable say like you know var one is equal to uh you know the, the return of a method and then like var two is equal to the return of the method you can actually just compose those two methods together and have the return type kind of flow through them uh so then that's where the data how it flows you can refer to these as a you're creating like a data pipeline um things like that uh and another way you can um look at this here is uh, this through this options name here data flow data flow link options propagate completion we set to true the reason I point this out is because this is explicitly called uh, data flow link options and I think that that's a good way to look at what's happening is the data is flowing through a series of composed together methods um, admittedly, the syntax is a little odd to read because you're not, you never see like where the, the method would like return it just as you're looking at it, but I'll show you kind of how we're going to go about that. Um, so I have here, I, I create a, a cancellation token that, I'm, that I pass through the entire pipeline, which is actually super nice because it allows you to create one token and then it flows through the whole thing in a real kind of like natural way. Um, because you define it at like the the head level and then it gets applied to all the methods which is which is actually super nice and then if you encapsulate all of them then it's it makes for a really self-contained uh, unit of code so then I I'd actually um, instantiate the block so var block is equal to test propagator block that's where I pass in the token so if we go to that here basically this is just a method that returns a type of I propagator block and then it accepts int as the input and then it returns int as the output. That's really the key here. So it gives you the T input and then the T output. So it's, it's generic, you can specify that whatever you want to be. But for me, I'm keeping it simple again. You can make this as simple or as incredibly complex as you want. And blocks really come into play for the uh, incredibly complex implementations and I'll show you why. Uh, but again, keeping it simple, I'm just gonna pass an int return an int, like you saw when I called the postman method, um, or when I use postman, I call this. So then I define a couple block options. 
Uh, so cancellation token is really the main thing I'm, I'm using these options as or for. So I pass in my token again, and then you pass that into each of the uh, transform blocks that you make. Uh, so, and then insured ordered, this is a little more of a nuanced thing, uh, but it, it says gets or sets value that indicates whether ordered processing should be enforced on a blocks handling of messages. This will come into play on the more complex implementations of this. If you're dealing with concurrent, uh, any kind of like concurrent uh, pipelines, like you, you'll say you have a parallel uh, for loop and then you, you pass data into uh, this block in a parallel nature, you don't care about ordering, uh, you should probably mark this as false. Uh, but if you do care about ordering, I believe the default is true, I think. Yeah, tr uh, yeah the default value is true. But again, we don't care about ordering, so, uh, and honestly, I don't need this, but I thought it was a good talking point for this example. Um, down here below is really where, what, uh, where the logic takes place. The first block here, uh, I, I made it this way just to illustrate a point that you can create these in a method and then return the block from the method. So I have build multiply block. And basically uh, what all this is, <coughs> is a method that uh, is of type transform block. And it says provides a data flow block that invokes a provided function in and then specifies an out result. There's a couple different types of blocks. There's a transform block, there's a buffer block that you can, that can all, buffer blocks are unique because they can also be used as queues. Um, well, I'm not gonna get to that in this example, but I have a write up on medium that kind of shows you how that could be useful. That would, key, uh, a buffer block would be super useful if you have really complex parallel code that you want to um, post a message to the queue as you're processing. Um, and, then, so you have, and then the other type is uh, action blocks. So action blocks don't have explicit uh, return value, I don't believe. Um, could be wrong about that, but and then you have a transform block. So I'm using transform blocks because I have an input and I have an output. My input's an int, my output's also an int. So right here, I'm returning a new type of transform block. And then you, you with this lambda, you specify what happens to the input. So item is going to be int, right? This is your specified input. We marked the generic as int, and then it's gonna be captured in this closure here. So we capture this uh, integer and then we act on it. So we're literally saying, take our number, add two, and then that's gonna be what's returned, right? So this is, a, this is a lambda function, but this could literally be written as, you know, uh, return item plus two. Uh, and then we pass our options in. So our options are the data flow options that we specified uh, here. You're gonna wanna mark propagate completion. There's a there's a method call to check to if the block completed. And you just wanna make sure that, that the, it, everything is flowing through, right? That's I think that's the key to way to look at this is, right, you're starting in one area and the data is flowing all the way through. Um, again, it, I, I just find it helpful to look at this word and just kind of, whoops, and kind of go from there. Um, so that's one way of doing it. Obviously, you don't need a method, but and then you can just, you know, create everything like that. So I have another one for adding. So I'm just adding to, and then, um, oops. Oh, this was carryover. <laughs> Hold on. I probably should mark these. I have to change the signs. Build multiply block, we want to multiply. Add block, we want to add. Divide block, we want to divide. Um, but I do want to be return something that's not, uh, actually, no, that's fine. So again, you can kind of see how um, we structured that. I'm actually gonna restart this so I can call it again from Postman. All right, so I restarted it, it's running again. And um, so that's where you define the blocks. And obviously, again, you can make these as, you can make these as complex as you possibly want to, because again, this implement this use of uh, this style of programming really helps for building modular pieces of, of, of code, right? So if you have very specific pieces, like let's say you're writing to a, a, a CSV, you're pull you're retrieving um, like weather data, you're writing to some database, those are independent things, right? Independent actions. You could compose all those in blocks. So that way, if you need to use them to something else or you need to customize a pipeline, you can just add a block in. 
And we do that with this link to method here, which is really, really neat. It's kind of a unique way of programming. Like it, 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 it's kind of weird to read because you're saying multiply block, link to add block. And then if we if we hover over this, it's um it doesn't <laughs> honestly it doesn't give us much information about what this does, unfortunately. But basically what how we can look at this is we're saying, okay, we're composing multiply block with add block. So the return of multiply block is going to be sent to add block. And then we take add block as our next value. We link it to the next block we want in our chain, which is the divide block. So that the return type of the return of add block is going to be sent to divide block. And there's no, it's nice because there's no explicit, like we're not saying like, um, you know, var uh, result is equal to, you know, uh, is equal to the output of this and the var result is equal to the output of this you know and then so it, it it's helpful because it allows you to bypass explicitly um allocating more space from a return value and, you, and that way you can just it, again it just flows through the whole chain so you can have them as many links as you want to um and then you, again you can specify all the messages here or uh, sorry all the uh, options and we've already given each of the block its own options here with the cancellation token. Uh, and then you can um, try to see what else here. The last part, once we've linked everything together, we can then encapsulate everything in a, a data, blow, data flow block, which, which is a type I propagator block. So it's, it's really unique code, um, the capsulates it encapsulates a target and source into a single propagator. Doesn't give us a whole lot. Honestly, I find the documentation for some of this TPL library stuff, task parallel library, to be like, I want to say, like kind of kind of weird to read, or difficult, at least that's my opinion of it. It's just like, it's hard to sometimes like apply it to maybe like a real life scenario because obviously you wouldn't, you wouldn't use this for this for for doing something like this, right? This is a, a tremendous amount of code to add to, divide by two, and multiply by two. This is not the scenario you'd use this for. This is just illustrating how it's used, and you can make these methods whatever you want. Um, and then if we go here to encapsulate, uh, again, this basically makes it a single unit, uh, a single propagator, as it's called. Um, now we have a block that basically represents all three of those methods that we that we had um, the multiply add and divide so now we have a block that we can send values through we're not actually calling the block like a method like we're not going to say block um, the temptation when you do this is to say like var uh, num is equal to you know block and then try to use it like a method like that it's not going to do that so it's it's because that's looking at it kind of like in uh, in the reverse meaning like that's looking at it as you're okay i'm passing something into a method and then i'm going to get something returned back i'm i need we need to look at it as okay we're sending something through this chain and then we're going to just send it through and uh, and then at a later point we're going to receive it back uh, so what we have to do is in this mindset of to be asynchronous, uh, we're going to await the send async method. Asynchronously offers a message to the target message block, allowing for postponement, and we're going to send that number that we passed in from our uh, our API call. So whatever number we pass in the parameters, that sends it through the block. But at that point, we haven't actually received it. It just sends it into there. We actually have to. Uh, await the receive to get the result all right so i have this running again and i passed a value into postman um right here and we can see that now after uh, adding multiplying and dividing by two um we get a value of three so let me let's just double check our math here let's go back to what we're actually doing here so uh item two times two is four uh, plus two is six divided by two is three. So that's what we get back is three for there. So again, if we made this, you know, a hundred, we could see what that is right there. 
Um, it can be it. It can be as big as number. Obviously, it can be whatever number you want it to be. Um, so yeah, it's kind of a, a neat uh, way of programming for sure. Um, obviously, it's it doesn't lean towards being used in like really simplistic use cases like this, and it's kind of tricky. Like honestly, I don't even know. There's a lot of options and a lot of ways you can you can configure this, um, where it really comes out um, <clears throat> out to be useful is in again more complex scenarios. Um, and I, I find that the trickier part with this style of programming, because it is it leans more towards the functional side of things, is that the syntax can be awkward if it's in like a more traditional, uh, you know, object-oriented style. Um, and I think it's unfortunate because this stuff this is really a interesting way to 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 do things, especially as your code base gets really complex, because you can write uh, in in pretty plain English, what, like if you were to name this different things like multiply, like link to, it's kind of easy to to read and see what's happening. Um, but again, it's not it's not useful for every case, but it's it's one way of uh, accomplishing something. Um, but in the next video, we're kind of we're kind of going to get to hopefully, well maybe not in the next video. In a future video, we're going to get into how this is more uh, useful for parallel uh, programming, especially when you couple it with what you can see here for um, buffer blocks, or we call it a queue. Um, but yeah, that's kind of it. And that's really just what I wanted to show in this one, at least it's, again, let me know your thoughts on this style or like this use of propagator blocks. I think they're kind of unique, um, but I don't know. Yeah, so that's it for this one and I'll see you in the next one.